a warm DEF CON welcome for Ian Foster and Dylan Avery. Or Avery? Avery. Avery, sorry. Uh, lost and found certificates. So just as a quick introduction, uh, as mentioned, this is Ian. He's a motorcycle hobbyist and DNS nerd. And this is still an electrical bike enthusiast and cat owner. Did you say cat owner? Yeah. It's true, though. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically, the problem that we're going to be talking about today is uh, what happens when an SSL certificate from a previous owner um, is still valid for uh, the next owner of the domain. So the previous owner gets a real SSL certificate that they're allowed to do for their domain. The domain either expires or transfers ownership. And then the new owner of the domain, um, they, uh, th they maybe don't realize that the previous owner still has a valid SSL certificate. And prior to 2013, um, there was really no way whatsoever to get any visibility of this. Um, and really, like when you think about it, it's, it seems kind of silly that this is even an issue. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, so an example we have here at the bottom, we see like Alice registers a domain name, in this case food.com for one year and gets an SSL certificate, in this case three years more than the one year domain name or registration. Food.com gets unregistered because Alice doesn't renew it. And then Bob later registers food.com, gets his own SSL certificate, completely unaware that Alice's SSL certificate is still valid for his domain name and she can encrypt traffic to it. So in order to help um, try to identify these certificates. We have certificate transparency. This was created as a public, uh, publicly auditable log of all SL certificates to help catch misbehaving certificate authorities. It's currently about half a billion certificates and growing. Uh, and basically, we can use certificate transparency to identify this issue, um, which gives us way more visibility than we had before. So basically, if the previous owner has an SSL certificate and it gets logged in CT, we can see it, and we know from that um, that the that there are still uh, certificates um, for our domain that, that we don't have control of. Um, so we look for like really notable examples of this, um, and and we were able to find some. Um, one particular example is for Stripe. So if you're not familiar with Stripe, they're a really big online payment processor, and a large percentage of transactions that you may have conducted online on e-commerce websites uh, may have actually uh, used Stripe under the hood. Um, what we found was that the previous owner of Stripe.com still had a valid SSL certificate when Stripe bought it. And now the crossover was relatively short, but it didn't have to be. It could have been a five-year cert. It could have been all the way up to today. So we tried to set out to figure out how big is this issue. So we searched for certificate transparency to look for certificates that overlapped multiple domain ownerships or registrations. And the hard part of this is trying to figure out when a domain name changed hands. Uh, there's no easy way of doing this. Um, the best way we could do, look at was historical who is, historical name servers, and the Wayback Machine. And we surveyed three million random domain names from the internet, and they're associated 7.7 .7 million certificates, which makes up just about 1% of the entire internet. So it's a fairly small study, which should give it a general idea of what what the whole entire internet looks like. And we look for changes like expiration date, email contacts, registrar changes to try to determine whether or not a domain name has changed hands or not. And this type of analysis is not perfect. There are both false negatives and false positives, um, but it should give us, still give us a good idea of what we're looking at. And we found that on our data set, about 40.45% of the domain names were had pre-existing SL certificates, which extrapolated to the entire internet is about 1.5 million domain names. And of the certificates for these 1.5 million domain names, about 25% have not expired and are still valid right now. And so we are calling this problem bygone SSL, which is we are defining as an SSL certificate created before and supersedes its domain's current registration date. This is just another way of saying that the SSL certificate spans multiple domain name registrations. So could this be any worse? So as many of you might know, a certificate can be valid for multiple domain names. In this case, we have a certificate for both foo.com and bar.com. Um, and a certificate can be good for domain names that may have changed ownership, and some of the domain names may have not changed ownership. In this, in this example, bar.com has always had the same owner, and foo.com may have changed owners one or more times during the existence of this certificate. So uh, if it's not immediately clear, a lot of CDNs will actually shove a whole bunch of customers on the same cert. And in this kind of extreme case, we found one instance of a CDN putting 700 of their customers on a single certificate. Um, and we've made the decision to blur this out because this is still a valid issue. But if we were to show the domains used on the certificate, I promise everyone in this audience would recognize some of them. 
And what we found was the one unblurred domain there was actually currently unregistered, it expired, um, and it was available for purchase. So basically, we have two options here of whether or not we can revoke these certificates. Uh, you know, the question is like, should we have the right to revoke these certificates? If you say no, then you can imagine shelling out a whole bunch of money for a new domain, maybe for your new startup. And you find that there's an old SSL certificate in CT that's gonna last for another five years, and you just you can't do anything about it. You just have to live with that fact. You can imagine a scenario where a bad guy might squat on a whole bunch of desirable looking domains and just selectively only give them out to e-commerce websites so that they could maintain SSL certificates, man in the middle of that traffic, and steal financial data. On the other hand, if we say yes, if you can revoke these certificates, you get these situations where certificates have both bygone domains on them and non-bygone domains on them. A lot of cases are still used in production, and if you give the new owner the right to revoke these certificates, then all of a sudden they have the power to deny the service, the, 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 the websites that are still using that certificate for legitimate reasons. So it's really a lose-lose scenario. So we dug a little deeper and we learned about the CA and browser form. And this is a group of people are, are made up of representatives from both web browsers and certificate authorities who create the baseline requirements for the issuance and management of publicly issued certificates, which is just a long document that specifies how CAs and browsers should operate so that the certificate authorities can be trusted by the web browsers. And in a, inside this very long document, section 963, subsection 5, it talks about revocation and the reporting of revocation, and it does specify that if any information in a certificate becomes inaccurate or incorrect, that the certificate authority must revoke the certificate. So, like, on the previous slide, like, inaccurate, that's kind of an ambiguous term. Like, we found this other section, though, 4.9.1.1, and this one, in my opinion, is a lot more explicit. It basically says, if the domain name registrant fails to renew the domain name, then if the certificate authority becomes made aware of that, that certificate authority has to revoke the certificate within 24 hours. Now, we're caveating this with the fact that we were warned by CAB members that this document is very um, ambiguous and sometimes self-contradictory. The people that draft this document, oftentimes lawyers, not actually engineers. That being said, to the best of our knowledge, we have the right and the power to revoke these certificates, and we have the power to do so within 24 hours. So going back to the previous example of the certificate for both foo.com and bar.com where one domain name is changed owners and one is not, this now means that if bar.com is still using the certificate that was valid for both foo.com and bar.com, um, the new owner of foo.com could reach out to bar.com certificate authority and revoke the certificate and cause a denial of service on them, or at least their users will get an SSL warning. And so looking at cases of this where domain names share a certificate with uh, other domains have changed ownerships. That number skyrockets or goes up four, four times increase, up to 7 million domain names on the internet are potentially affected, uh, about 2%. Um, and of this sample set, about 41%, just under half, still haven't expired and are still valid and potentially still being used. So, I mean, at this point, Ian and I are realizing we can, we can break stuff, like a lot of stuff. Um, Ian and I had the power to revoke something like 3 million certificates, and the CAs had a legal obligation to do so within 24 hours. And most of those certificates, well, I shouldn't say most, a lot of those certificates were still being used in production. So it would have broken all kinds of websites, all kinds of places. A lot of the websites are definitely ones that you all are familiar with. And so we thought that this basically, there's, there's no real clean fix to this, so we, we have to just introduce a new class of vulnerability. And there's two flavors to this. The first flavor is the one that we first introduced. It's when you get a new domain and you notice or don't notice, you see in the CT log that the previous owner still happens to have a valid SSL certificate. We're calling that variant the bygone SSL man in the middle variant. And the other type is the type I was just talking about, which is the bygone SSL denial of service, where you share a certificate and are still using it with an alt name, which is expired or been acquired by someone else. And that gives them the power to revoke the certificate that you're using. And if they were to do that, that would take down your site. Um, so if you remember back from a couple slides ago, uh, there was that CDN that showed 700 customers on one cert. We now realize that if we bought that domain and reached out to the certificate authority, we could say, hey, the previous domain owner failed to renew. You have to revoke this thing. And we now have the power to revoke it and break 700 customers' websites. 
Now for our demo, I'm going to be tabbing over to an email client and in real time revoking the cert. Not really. <laughs> um, but but we, we totally have the power to do that. So for our pre-recorded demo, um, we, we have a couple of certs here that, we, uh, that we, we did reach out to the certificate authorities just to see whether or not they would actually revoke them. And so for the first example here on the left for uh, DigiCert, I, I should mention this cert had a subject alt name on it, and the subject alt name was using that certificate in production. Um, we reached out. We said, hey, one of the domains on this certificate belongs to us. Can you please revoke the cert? And the way we framed the email, it seemed like we didn't own the other domain. And within 24 hours, they just start verified that we did own the one domain, didn't verify that we owned the other domain. They had no problem revoking the cert. So another example here, we reached out to, to, to Amazon. And I should mention also, like, usually certificates have a little field on them called the CPS contact. And the CPS contact is basically the email contact you want to reach out when you want to revoke the certificate. That's the contact that starts the 24-hour timer when you reach out to that. Um, so we did that for DigiCert. For Amazon, they actually didn't have a CPS contact on their certificate. And it's kind of hard to reach out to AWS if, there's not, um, if, if you're not like a customer of AWS. So we, we tried to do this the best we can without actually creating an AWS account. And we found this public email, ec2abuse at amazon.com. And that's the one we reached out to. It took a little bit of back and forth and a little bit of routing, but eventually that got us to the right, uh, the right certificate people. It took a couple of weeks, but again, they had no problem uh, revoking the certificate for us. So uh, this, this is our pre-recorded demo that failed. Um, we reached out to uh, Komodo, and same thing. We reached out to the CBS contact, asked them to revoke the certificate. And uh, to this day, they still haven't revoked the certificate. They basically said, uh, you're not the original owner, like you didn't generate that certificate, we, we're, we're not going to pay attention to you at all. And on the bottom there, you can see they, they actually tried to use it as an upselling opportunity, saying, forget about the old certificate, we'll, we'll sell you a shiny new one, you can you just forget about the, the, the one that the previous owner still has. So next we try the revoke certificates using Let's Encrypt, which is a slightly different type of certificate authority. They use the ACME protocol to try to automate as much as they can with no human interaction. Um, and currently, if you use the ACME protocol to try to revoke a certificate, they require you to prove ownership of every domain name in the certificate in order to uh, actually have the revocation happen. So we reached out to their CPS contact and asked them about this, and they recognized that, the, or said, specified that this is their current policy that they require you to prove ownership of all domain names in the certificate to revoke, um, and recognized that it is a slight conflict with the CA, CA browser form, and that they are currently considering a change of policy to, pre to prevent this. There ex might exist the case where someone has a certificate for a domain name um, that you might have that domain name for because you lost the domain name required from them. Um, so we're currently with Let's Encrypt, we were not able to revoke this certificate, but it could be possible and, in the future. And if Let's Encrypt implements that, it's also worth pointing out that that'll be real-time replication. It won't be like 24 hours while the CA reaches out kind of thing. <clears throat> like, because their whole system is real-time automated, if you use Let's Encrypt and one of your domains on your cert becomes bygone, instantly somebody on the internet will be able to revoke your certificate. Very true. So now I'll talk about CertGraph. This is a tool I made a while ago. Um, I call it, it's an open source intelligence gathering tool that crawls the graph of certificate alt names. Um, it works by you give it a domain name, um, it finds all the SL certificates for that domain name, goes through, gets all the alt names of all the certs, um, gets all the certificates for all those alt names, and continues to grow and grow until you get a complete graph of all domain names and certificates for a given domain name or property. It's, it was built the idea of um, domain name enumeration for red team targets, but it's very useful for trying to find um, vulnerable domain names for like on SL denial of service as well. This is an example on the uh, graph generated with this tool um, on the FS website. So one particular example where we found this was at Salesforce. So we ran this in salesforce.com and created this nice graph and we ended up at squarespace.com, which is nothing new to Salesforce. Um, and this was because salesforce.com used to own do.com, um, lost that domain name somehow, Squarespace got it, not sure it expired, they transferred. But they kept in the salesforce.com SSL certificate, the one that red dot in the, in the in the center of the circle of green on the left, that SL certificate was good for do.com. And it was, it was good for do.com far after they owned it and after Squarespace had it. So Salesforce had a valid SL certificate for another company at this time. And this gives one, Salesforce the ability to potentially man the middle squarespace.com and also squarespace.com could have revoked Salesforce's SL certificate taking down their site. And if you look on the, the uh, left side, all those like uh, green encircled domains around that certificate, those are all of the websites that would all of a sudden break if Squarespace decided to revoke this thing within 24 hours. Yeah. 
So this is digging a little deeper into the New York Com example. We can see on the right is the certificate in question. Um, the top part we have in red the dates that it was valid before and after. You can see um, there's between the two different owners and all the domain names it was valid for Salesforce and Duda.com. And then the left, we have historical NS lookups for this domain name. Um, the screenshot was taken after the domain name had been transferred to where it currently is right now. I believe it's like a for sale auction site. So someone else can go buy that domain name if they want. But on the circled red part um, is when Salesforce had the domain name in the past. So you can see historical name services being hosted at Microsoft, AWS, and a few other places as well. So we wanted to also introduce a tool specifically crafted for finding this. So CircGraph is a nice visualization tool. Um, uh, we, we created a, a new tool that uses the uh, Facebook Certificate Transparency API um, to both detect bygone SSL denial of service and bygone SSL man in the middle. Now it's caveated with the fact that you have to give it accurate information. So to detect bygone SSL man in the middle, you need to give it a complete list of all the, or uh, you need to give it the, the list of all the domains you own with an accurate um, date on when you first registered it. So maybe you renewed it a couple times and the created date on the WHOIS record doesn't actually reflect the first time you created it. You need to make sure that actually reflects the first time you, uh, you bought the domain. And then to detect bygone SSL man in the middle, you give it a list of all domains that you own and it will go through and see if any of those domains share certificates with domains that you don't own. Um, so for this to be accurate, you need to give it a complete list of all domains you own. As long as you do those two things, have an accurate registration date and a complete list of all domains you own, you won't get any false positives and it can very accurately detect uh, both flavors of the problem. Uh, the, the two downsides to using this tool, uh, first, you have to create a Facebook developer account and, and give them a token. Um, and, and the second downside is Facebook actually will uh, rate limit you if you hit it too aggressively. And lastly, we created another tool, the Bygone SSL Certificate Transparency Log Monitor, and this acts as a certificate transparency actual log. Um, we used um, SSLmate's cert spire tool and added in Bygone SSL detection to that, so you create a config file for the domain names for the certificates you want to be alerted for, specify a valid app date, which is the date that you acquired the domain name, and then whenever it finds the matching shirt, it'll print out or notify you the, like, the full information like in the screenshot right here. And if it happens, notice that the certificate is valid both before and after the date that you acquired it. It puts this little bike on SL equals true flag. And those changes have been accepted upstream into SL made search spotter. So you can grab that from them if you want to run your own certificate transparency log monitor. Um, although note that we'll look through all the half a billion certificates in CT and it will take some time. But if you want a completely self-hosted solution, this will work great. So if you want to try to protect yourself from being vulnerable from bygone SSL or someone else having a SSL certificate for your domain name or potentially revoking one that you're using, and the best you can do right now is to use the expect CT header with the enforce flag on your HTTP server. Um, this will protect you from someone else having a, a SSL certificate for your domain names that's not in CT and using it on you. Um, however, this will not protect case where the certificate has already been logged in CT. Um, there is no current protection against that. The best thing you can do is monitor CT logs using our tools or others for all, all SL certificates for your own domain names. And if you see a certificate for your domain name, either before issue before you got it or after, reach out to the CA and ask them to revoke it. Um, and it should also point point out that um, not all certificates will be in CT logs. CT was only required for browsers like Chrome as of April of this year for non-EP certificates. The certificates issued before then, a lot of them are in there. I've seen certificates as early as 2009 and before in certificate tra transparency logs, but it's not a requirement to be trusted by browsers. So now we've got some requests for the general internet as well. We realize like this issue isn't going yeah. away. This issue isn't going away. Um, we have some basically Band-Aid asks. Um, so for example, registrars could notify uh, new, uh, when people first uh, register a domain, domain name, the registrar gives you a heads up and say, hey, we check CT and the previous owner still has a valid certificate. Um, they might even also consider auto revocation in certain cases. Um, another ask is if these certificates are much shorter lived, like the Let's Encrypt 90 day policy, the issue is still there, but it's there for a, a shorter period of time. We don't have to deal with the, the five year issue that we talked about before. Um, when you do your revocation, um, it's, it's kind of courteous to, to give a heads up to the other people using uh, certificates with subject alt names so you don't accidentally break production websites. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as mentioned before, uh, there's no mechanism stopping you from breaking a production website. Um, and uh, CAs could also 
not issue certificates that uh, go on beyond the expiration date of the domain. So if you do who is on the domain, you see the expiration date, um, there's no reason why the certificate uh, should ever outlive that. And so CAs could just not issue certs that, that outlive the, the lifetime of the domain. Um, and then the last bullet point here um, is, is really targeted at uh, C CDNs specifically, um, but also just generally companies. Um, you you got to be really uh, careful with the way you use subject alt names. If you shove a whole bunch of domains on the same certificate, um, in, in kind of the worst case there, 700, um, one of them might become expired, and that's going to open yourself up to a stranger uh, revoking your certificate. Um, so, you know, a, re a recommendation there is kind of, you could do what GitHub is doing with GitHub pages. They have every single customer on their own. Let's encrypt it if you use a custom domain. Um, but if you, if you share uh, customers on the same cert, you're opening yourself up. All right, that concludes our talk. Um, here are the links to the tools that we talked about and our Insecure Design website where we have more information on this topic. Thank you all very much. Oh, and we'll take questions outside. <laughs>